Okay, I got a little bit of a bind here. Is I want my cymbals louder. I'm big on this concept that that cymbals um, that are too soft just suck all the energy out of a song, a rock song especially. And a rock song where a drummer could bang around a little bit, I want to hear that. That's a big deal. And if that sounds more like, then that that kills something for me. And and um, I remember, I guess it was the second Creed record. Um, as fun as that is to look back on, uh, oh, the symbols were like non-existent. They weren't even there. You couldn't even hear them. It was just nothing. And I, and I thought to myself, this is really weird. And I've kind of studied that phenomenon for for uh, years now. And I noticed that if you go back to something like Nirvana, Nevermind, you know, the symbols are just and not bad. Not they didn't sound you know any way crappy. It was just um, more of them, and it, it added something to it. And you can take that too far, and symbols can get too crazy. And I think we probably heard that in some of the more garagey. Uh, grunge era stuff but uh either way when it comes to my mixes if if the mix feels like it's missing something and it's not just kicking me in the butt it's almost always a sign in a rock song that i need more symbols now i did that just a second ago and that's why i wanted to start this video is i thought to myself well okay i want more symbols let's crank the overheads up a little bit overheads have other stuff in them too of course in this case i have the overheads i think i'm high past at 1k or something so they really have turned into cymbal mics and attack mics for close for like toms and stuff i guess but anyway um when i turned them up all it really did was trash up my drum sound and i didn't want trashy i just i wanted pretty but i wanted them loud or louder or more of them so let's look at this what i got here and again i apologize for the mix not being finished but And on my headphones here, I can hear the cymbals okay. There's nothing wrong. I mean, I don't hear it going blah. But on my monitors, they were a little bit tame. My headphones are, are pretty bright on these Audio-Technica ATH-M50s. So anyway, let's see. Hopefully your system is showing this. Even in my headphones, though, I feel like I want a little bit more of those cymbals. Okay, so I have my pretty bus, which is my hi-hat mic and two uh, overheads. Now I'm going to turn that up. We're at uh, zero on that. I'm going to turn it up, and we'll see if we can get anything cool out of it. I already know what's going to happen, so let's watch this. It feels better in that the cymbals are louder, but I, I think it's mostly the ride, actually. But something about that is bringing up some kind of 6K junk. And I could uh, probably go in there and maybe DS or EQ. I could probably come up with some scam to control that. But I always avoid that stuff if I can. And I've got a better solution. This is what I recommend you guys experiment with for sure. And it works really well uh, with real drums. Uh, a lot of samples have already kind of had the high, pat or high shelf boost treatment. But what I like to do is instead of even thinking about the cymbals in terms of individual elements, go back to thinking of the drums as one whole. Now, it's kind of funny for me to say that because I have my one drum bus fader, but then I've got one, two, three, four, five. Oops, I just ruined my mix. Oh, crap. That's going to be bad. Anyway, can't undo that in Cubase. I guess we'll swing it. Anyway, I've got five uh, other buses of drums, so I've done a whole lot to make them sound like one cohesive unit. But if, let's just assume we were working with um, like a more of a hip hop thing, and we had a loop that was um, uh, a drum loop and, and some other stuff maybe. But if we wanted the cymbals louder in a loop, what would we do? Well, your only real option is to do a high shelf boost to crank that high end all together. Now drums, particularly like I said, drums I've tracked myself, I almost always want a little more top end, and that's just the nature of the beast. And for some reason. Uh, drum buses take this extremely well. They like it. At least in my world, they like it. You might have different tastes and all that business, but I don't care. It's my video. Now, so let's watch what I'm going to do here. Instead of worrying about individual elements of the cymbals, let's just add some top end to the drums as a whole. And I'm only adding two decibels, uh, high shelf boost, and I'm using one of the old high school... Or high school? Man, I'm crazy. <laughs> Too late at night. Uh, I'm using one of the old school uh, type of uh, filters where it has a resonance to it. And what that means, if we take it really extreme, yeah, it's not as extreme as I wanted, but you can see that we, with this boost, we also get a cut, I get a dip. Now, we'll go back to wherever the, where the hell I had it, something more like that. What this does is it, it uh, and I'm, it says uh, 3.7K here. 
that might be, I don't know, and I, it's a little hard to measure what that really means because by then it's already cutting and whatnot with the resonance. Anyway, what we're doing is we're boosting the pretty stuff, and then we're actually going to notch out just a little bit in this, uh, eh, I don't know, somewhere between 1.5K and 5K range. Taking a little bit of the, the pain element out of that, which uh, usually I don't want too much of that in there. I usually have plenty of that junk, so I don't need any more. So let's listen to what this does. We'll see before. Here we are. All right, and that's okay. I don't like it. No, it's okay though. Now, now, just a two bus uh, high end boost on the drums. Yeah, see, that's getting way better. And it, it didn't take much. Again, th this is something I talk about a lot, where we have this this magic threshold where. Um, it's either if you're popping through this magic line, then you're going to be audible as hell. You're going to be easy to be heard. But then when you start getting a little bit deeper, it's hard to, it's easy to get lost in there. And I, I haven't really explained it right here. I'm just freestyling this. But it reminds me a lot of a swimming pool, actually, where you stick your hand in the water and you're uh, two inches uh, under the water where you can see your hand pretty clearly. It's obviously distorted by the, the waves or whatever, but you can see it. And you stick it down about, I don't know, four feet, and maybe you can't even make it out at all. And so there's something about this, this audio thing that's very nonlinear, and that when you get really close, it, you see it in a hurry. Um, ah! I'm wound up smashing my keyboard again. Uh, anyhow, uh, so, so sometimes just by a two decibel thing is the difference between being, you know, three feet underwater and three inches underwater. And you go, ah, there it is. And I could certainly go way further if I really felt like it, and maybe I would. But anyway, the real concept here is to use uh, EQ... Uh, in a, in a bus situation, and this would actually work on the two bus too. Let's see what that does. I got a feeling it will work just fine, and this is a weird thing about uh, bu uh, thinking in terms of bus EQ. Now, I can't use the, EQ, the Cubase one for this. Uh, we can actually talk about that here in a second, but uh, because I'll be, well, it doesn't matter. We'll stick with the Cubase EQ to keep everything simple. For this, it'll be okay. All right, so we'll use that same EQ here just to keep everything equal. 2D being. Around 4K, give or take. Let's see what happens. What I noticed when I turned that EQ off right there, it wasn't like, oh, no, the mix fell apart. But what it sounded like, it sounded like our low mid guys said, we're taking back over here. And those low mid guys are a little bit crappy to me. And this, I mean, I need to deal with that still, but they're a little bit not perfect, particularly with the extreme level of ambience I've got on here at this point. Um, so it, it really is one of those things where if you're not listening for it, you may not even know what happened or if anything changed at all. But when I paid attention, it, it, there was a fundamental shift in power. And it went from the high end saying, we have a, an adequate amount of control in this region to saying you know what the low mids can have it so listen to that one more time i'm going to bounce in and out with that that high shelf boost anyway i'm kind of getting off track here but the, the point is is to use bus compre or bus equalization can be an awesome way of playing with levels, uh, especially if you kind of think the way the loop guys do, like with rap music, where maybe they just have a drum loop, you know, how would you add top into that thing? Well, or make the, I should say, how would you, man, I'm running, this, running my story. How would you add, get those cymbals louder? Well, the only way you really can, since it's already rendered down, is to do, use the high shelf uh, boost, and that can give big benefits to kick and snare as well. So start thinking in terms of buses a little bit with your processing and see what happens. It's been really good for me. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye.